Hey, what's happening, guys? Well, as you've seen from the title, obviously, we are going to build a dim bulb tester today. That is a current limiting device you use uh, in testing high voltage applications. In this case, uh, well, not high voltage. Well, there will be some high voltage, but high current applications. When you want to limit the current in a device you're, you're testing, this is a great way to do it. And it's really simple. I mean, you need an incandescent light bulb. The brightest bulb you can get, which is obviously not me, because I've only got a 100 watt bulb here. It is stupidly hard to find actual incandescent bulbs anymore. Yeah, I mean, I know I can order them, but I don't want to order them. My, my whole house is LEDs. That's why, probably why it's so hard to find an incandescent bulb. Anyway, for this one, we're going to need a socket for your bulb. And in this one, this was one of my dad's things. My dad absolutely adored sketchy electrical devices and had them all over the house. So he's like, whenever you need a light, you just plug one into an outlet. I'm like, yeah, but dad, it's at my knees. He's like, it's light though, isn't it, son? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, it's light. So you're going to need a bulb, you're going to need a socket. You don't need this type of socket. I just happen to have this one, and it's going to work well for this. You are going to need an electrical socket. This is an old socket. I tested it to make sure it works. And we're going to do a little modification to this. Because in our case, you can see we have the two colors here. The bulb and adapter are going to plug in there. And then our device under test is going to plug in here. You're going to need a three-prong uh, grounded cable. This is a piece of an old appliance cable. Since it's not marked, I uh, made sure I knew which one was the uh, live and which was the neutral because this is an unpolarized plug, but the grounding uh, the grounding pin will hold it in the proper direction. So in an American plug, if you look at it with the grounding pin on the bottom going away from you, it is live and neutral and ground. Don't mess it up. Then we need somewhere to put it. Uh, a simple junction box in an outlet cover is good. I like 3D printing, so I 3D printed this one and painted it, which you can see, man, this is still a little bit wet. They usually dry faster than this. Like, I mean, like this one I painted at the same time, and it's pretty much dry. So that is going to go on top. Not quite a uh, perfect fit, but it will do the job for what I want. So let's get started, and we're going to have to prep our outlet. So again, looking at our outlet, we have ground on the bottom, live on the right, and neutral on the left. So our live are the gold screws, our neutral are the silver screws. And if you look up close here, you see that little tab in, the, in between them? That is the only thing connecting the two halves of the socket. So if we snap that tab off, these might not be the right pliers to do this, hang on. There we go. Just took a minute. Because these are really too big to get in there. But yeah, you just grip it and wiggle it back and forth. And it'll pop. And you definitely want to make sure when we're dealing with, you know, mains electricity that things are doing what you expect them to do before you plug it in. So, continuity test. Good. I'm just going to move it around just to make sure and show you. Good. Same over here. Just to show. So there's no continuity there. But we need to make sure that we have continuity from here to here. And we do. And none from here to here. 
none from here to here perfect do the same thing over here continuity none none perfect and then one final check pardon me <coughs> I'm just gonna make sure that neither side is a direct short to ground all right all of our testing is now complete let's get on to the wiring follow along with me this brown outlet up here do not think of this as an outlet it's not an outlet anymore okay what it is is a way to hold that light bulb so we are going to bring in our live which I have marked in black here like so now what we're going to do is we are going to open up the neutral side of our brown the one that we're using as a uh, a switch basically or a light bulb holder and we're going to put a jumper wire in here Now our jumper wire, which is the live, needs to put live over here. So we need to bring that jumper over here. To this side's live. Okay, and now <clears throat> we're going to hook neutral up right here. How many of you have already seen the biggest mistake I've made so far? Because it just occurred to me a second ago. Forgot to put it in the box. <laughs> Polly idiot. And finally, we need to connect our ground to the ground lug. So now we are all wired up here. Let's test again because electricity can kill you and nobody wants to die so what do I need one, more here. one of these here guys for my my tester all right remember so this should be our live All right, we got continuity, remember? We're clipped to our live. So if I follow up here, we should have continuity. And we do. And we should have it in here. But we shouldn't have anything over here. Or here. Or here. Okay? Now, if we put... the light bulb in again we're still connected to live we should have continuity here now it should pass through the light bulb and we should have continuity over here 
and then following that brown wire we should have our live now over here all good so far and we should have nothing here good now we'll test our neutral side in neutral side we should have continuity here we should have nothing here we should have nothing on either of these and we should have nothing on our ground so we are now wired up properly if you will give me one moment I will shut off the camera and put it in the box like I should have done in the first place and we'll come back and continue All right. from there I mounted it in the box rewired it wrapped the outlet and tape I know that's a controversial subject I just feel better if it's wrapped and then the piece de resistance the absolute wrong screw to hold that on you're the wrong screw aren't you or are you just not long enough let's see You are the wrong screw. You are the weakest link. One moment, please. All right. We got everything together now. All looking sketchy, but it'll work, I think. So, first thing we need to do is plug in our dim bulb in order for it to be a dim bulb tester. Then... I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to power it up and hope nothing blows up and it's not going to I didn't expect it would you see I don't know if you can see but it's not drawing any amps at all or watts or amps or no power all right let's plug in something that works this plug goes to that lamp right there so I'm gonna flip the switch on that lamp and let's see what happens the lamp works the bulb is not lit lamp off power off device under test unplug okay so what does all that mean well, what would happen if there was a short circuit? Have you ever shorted 110 volts? I'm, I'm sure most of us have. You know, you get a crack and a pop and it blows the fuse and it can be uh, somewhat unsettling. So right here, I have the Learn Electronics Dim Bulb Tester Tester 3000. Using this highly advanced piece of technology, we, you and I, you're part of this now, you're an accomplice, will test out whether or not this dim bulb can help save us in the event of a short circuit. So, verifying power is off. Verifying sticks are far apart. Powering up device. And, oh, what will happen when I short this out? Will it blow up or will it just light up the bulb? Bink, bink, just lights up the bulb. And let's see if we can see how much current we got through here. All right, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not, but let's light it up and we'll get an idea. Come on. Uh, it looks like 600 milliamps it limited the current to. So, power off. I'm just going to unplug this here anyway, because, you know, the more places you can unplug it from, the safer you'll be. Wah, wah, wah. All right, don't ever do that. 
So that is a dim bulb tester. Uh, pretty simple to build. Could save your life. Could save your house from burning down. Make sure you build it right. And uh, you're going to see that upcoming in uh, the Gibson Skyhawk amp restoration video later this week. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.